obviously Muse can do a lot. I like the full control that, say, Edge Animate gives me. As, you, as I refresh this page, you'll see this animation. I want this to tell a story. I'm not just adding animation just for the heck of it. You know, I'm trying to tell the story of this spacious area. And not only that, adding that interactivity. Here's another example of an Edge Animate piece. Okay, so interactive. This could be infographic related, whatever I want. I have that flexibility, tying it in with information from a database if I want to. I have that sort of control. I can go beyond that too, because it's not just about the web. Oh look, iPad right here. Okay, so I'm sharing this screen. Taking that Edge Animate piece, dropping it in this iPad app, and again, as I select, you can see that content load and I can start to pan around on it, okay? So that's what I want to do, not only with Edge Animate, but I'm also going to show you how to build an app, literally in 15 minutes. Starting out in Edge Animate, I'll start with a new page. It's not some proprietary file, it's an HTML page. You can take an HTML page, open it up in Edge Animate. And what's cool is again, no lines of code, jumping in here, if I wanted to, say, manipulate the background, since I have that stage selected, you guys guessed it, jumping in here, this is gonna do the obvious, right? Really straightforward, you guys can figure this out, right? You guys are smart enough to know how all of this works. But what happened behind the scenes? As I take a look at that little square, I did not have to write background image, WebKit, linear, gradient, da 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 da, -da. I don't have to worry about it. It does that for me. I could draw out divs, that's fine. Let's get rid of that, we don't need a box. Let's import some graphics. Again, from Photoshop, export it out using the generate feature if I want. Taking a ping file, bringing it in. Now let's animate this particular image. So all I need to do, auto keyframe mode on. So when I move this object, you can see it generates those keyframes, right? Again, I didn't have to type anything in. I could move this off to the side, maybe shrink him down, whatever I need to do. So we could start off over there. It builds all those keyframes. Take my timeline marker, go in three seconds, right over here, and now I can move that object. Since auto keyframe mode is on, I move it over, scale it up, and you can see, again, what happens. Let's add some fun to this, because I, I don't like this linear movement. It's all the same pace. So, Let's make it a little more fun by adding some linearness, if that's a word. Selecting that, ease out. You have quad, keep, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know what quart does. I don't know what quart, I don't, even, I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Oh, I understand lines. It's gonna slow down. Even if we do back, this will be a little fun, but it's gonna go beyond its final position and then stay right there. So with that selected, change those. And again, you can see it go up and then go back a little bit, right? That's easing. There's hardly a project I make where I don't use any easing, just because it adds that nice, smooth motion to it. Let me show you guys something. I'm gonna take it up a level, okay? So I'm gonna import these graphics very quickly. You guys know how that's done. Here's my scene. I'm gonna show you something that will blow your mind. This toggle pin tool, turning that on, that gives me this pin right here. Quite frankly, I have the final scene built, and this is how you'll often work. You'll have your final scene, and then what do you have to do? You know, frame one, move everything off, three seconds in, move everything back in, right? Annoying, because I already have everything in its final position. So I could take that pin, and that says, hey, the final position and all those properties are gonna be pinned right down here. So now all I need to do, is just start pushing this content off. So sliding off those butterflies over there. Moving him over, taking the trees, again, pushing the trees over a little bit as well. Right, taking this background, shifting that some. Taking this, uh, this larger background and just moving it subtly. So again, some quick moves, and I hit play, you can see that content roll in. It built out all of that. Again, taking it to the next level, I'm gonna select everything. We talked about filters earlier, and I wanna create that cool depth. Well, what would I do? I can add a blur. So I can blur that out some, maybe 10 pixels, like that. So it's gonna start there, and then it gets sharp, right? And that's pretty good, 
right? So it creates that blurriness. We'll have that content slide in. It'd be cool to have a focus on the background and then focus on the foreground, right? So what do we do in that case? That background right here starts out blurry, doesn't it? Just right click and we can invert that transition. So inverting that background, bam, you'll see it get sharp. We'll do this for a couple things, running it again. Since those are inverted, sharp, and then it does that focus on the foreground. Cool? Pretty easy, right? I'm, I'm taking complex situations like this. I could have him animate the same way, move him three seconds in, duh, like that. The only time they go that straight is when they're falling out of the sky. That's a little morbid. But let's delete that. I'd want to have it follow a path. So check this out right over here in Edge Animate 2.0, motion paths, turning that on, all right? With it turned on, again, I'll put them back in place, scrub in three seconds, move it to a different position. As I zoom in on this line, I get the happy, I love seeing this icon, by the way, because I know exactly what it does, it says, you know what? You can go ahead and manipulate that motion path. Let's take this, let's have them do a loop. Right? Like that. Again, there it is. And hit the space bar. All by just manipulating a line. I don't even know how to do this in JavaScript. I would ha wouldn't have a clue, right? But you guys are thinking, he's not flapping his wings. So how would we do that? I want to touch him, he's going to fly away. And he's got to flap his wings. So any object in Edge Animate, if I select it, this little Actions button. Selecting that Actions button. Oh, again, very handy. I can do touch events, uh, different swipe events. We'll just do, you know, a mouse enter, for instance. Insert code. Oh, I hate this. What do I do? Right? That's what I think. This is the scariest thing you can typically see because you're not helping me any. But as I scroll over, you'll see the code snippets. Easy enough. I just want to play that current timeline. Click. It adds it right there. You can do git symbol, all sorts of things. Add your own JavaScript, so if you want to work with the developer to drop in whatever you want, you have that sort of flexibility as you can see here. And what this says, as soon as you touch that butterfly, fly away. There happens to be four of them there. You can see them go a little crazy. Edge Animate gives you all the flexibility you need to create what you want. Let's drop in some uh, amazing animation just like that. And from there, I can go ahead and, first of all, it's HTML. But I can also publish this out and make it smaller. But at the end of the day, I can make a sort of a minimized, compact version and use the Google Chrome frame for older browsers. This animate deployment package, this OAM file, just a zip file, that's all it is. I could take that OAM, rename it zip, unzip it, you'll see all that HTML in there. I could give this file to Terry. He could drop it in his Edge Animate piece. Edge Animate gives me the flexibility, put that on the web, put it in an app. So let's take a look at how you'd make an app using, sure enough, InDesign. You can create, again, a standard layout, iPad vertical. You can create your horizontal size, but you can create an alternate layout. I can sort of target all these different sizes, whether it's iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Android devices. So I'm sticking with iPad, but that's how I made that second column. So I have the vertical, and then I have the horizontal. But now I'm going to have some fun with this, because I'm thinking, okay, this isn't the printed page. I can interact with this. How can I add some of that coolness? For this image, there's more to it. As I select it, I could potentially sort of pan around on this image. And that's typically the case for images in InDesign, is they're cropped. Well, I want to give the user the ability to pan around on this image. So with it selected, all the interactivity I want to do is in this folio overlays panel. Pan and zoom with that image selected. It's as simple as turning it on, done, right? This text box right here, there's more to it as well. I don't have to have columns and columns of text, OK? This is interactive. One box with more content there. Let's make it a scrollable frame. And let's make it scroll vertically. And that's done. OK? With that done, I do want to see it. In fact, I want to see it on my iPad. So in order to do that, this little preview button down here, since I have my iPad connected, I can preview it directly on my iPad. And there it is. 
Again, I'll tap to view that image back there, pan around on how to survive on a deserted island. Again, no code, good to go. I can scroll through that text right there. Yes, it's easy. Another common thing to do is take a bunch of images. Let's make our little slideshow, putting them one on top of the other. Let's make it a multi-object state. Bam. Okay. Multi-state, generic name. Hey, let's make that a slideshow. It actually brings it up automatically. But I can make this a slideshow and say, hey, you know what? Auto play it. You could do a, a tap to play or pause, swiping through a bunch of images in here. As you swipe through um, on this element, it will swipe through all of those images. But just really just pointing to that folder. So that's what you'll do there. There's an edge animate piece, so the OAM file placed right here. Adding any video I want, just placing it as if it's an image. And that's what's going on right here. You can see audio and video. I can say, hey, you know what, autoplay if I want to. And then we have even more interactive content as we move through here. So if I ever want to do anything extra fancy that's not in this overlay panel, I can say, again, partner with the developer. This is going to pull in a map. This is going to uh, access the compass on the device. And lastly, with that done, right in here, Folio Builder, when I select this, I then have the opportunity to add the icons, any other details around that, this specific project, and it will put that IPA right on your desktop. You'd use iTunes to sync that to your iPad, so DPS, single edition, is what we're checking out now. Uh, survival app, as I launch that, again, this will load up again. But you'll see various pages, as you can see, the, these articles right in here. But also, as I kind of swipe to the top, I already had this loaded. But um, as I swipe to the top, you have the ability, again, swiping through with my finger. It's cycling through all those images, OK? Look at right down here, these images. Auto playing through. I just made a multi-state object. Said, hey, you know what? Go ahead and play. It's the edge animate piece right there. Swiping through this gallery on the bottom. Okay. Going next with video. Again, just tapping that. You'll see video play right there. Okay. And this actually has the accelerometer. That's HTML content. I'm manipulating that hook as well. And we have that compass that not only works as I tilt the device. But this is actually a map as well. And I wanted to pull this up because I do want you guys to join us uh, right down the street uh, at Patsy's as well, right? I know it was fast, but still impressive, yes? Cool.